This week on the Storycraft Society, we're going to be crafting this set for Old Al Well from Lost Mine of Fandel. Welcome back to the channel. Over the last couple of months, actually the entire life of the channel, we've been crafting all of the terrain that you're gonna need for a Lost Mine of Fandelver adventure, and this week is no different. Uh, this week we're diving into the Old Owl Well set, where what we're gonna need is a well, where it gets its name from. We're gonna need a ruined watchtower with a courtyard, and then we're gonna need a tent for the necromancer to stay in. So we're gonna be covering all that this week. Let's get into crafting. Old Owl Well. Let's talk about what we know. So we know that Old Owl Well is an old crumbling shell of a watchtower with an adjacent courtyard next to it that is currently right now being inhabited by Hammond Cost, an evil necromancer who has raised 12 zombies in this area. So we know that we need the shell of the watchtower. We need some kind of a courtyard. And we also know that we're gonna need the well that is where the place gets its name from. And then we're going to need a tent. Specifically, the book says that it's a colorful tent. So I have my uh, piece of masonite here, and then I have all of the remnants and old pieces that I saved from doing Agatha's layer last week, which is gonna come in handy because we're gonna use all this stuff on here. Saves us a whole bunch of time, and I'm ready to dive into it. So let's start making another crumbling uh, tower. This one's gonna be more decrepit this time. So I'm gonna be making a planter that my paved path kind of goes around to kind of imply the courtyard. And I realized that the bricks that I made for Agatha's lair are just gonna to be too big and that it wouldn't leave any area inside of the planter. So I pulled out a bunch of bricks that I have saved from older builds. Always save your scrap bricks from old builds because you never know when you're gonna need them. And I'm gonna take those and that's what I'm gonna to use to make my planter.
So now that we have our basic layout and structure done, we have our ruined shell of the tower, we've got our paved path, we've got our little planter in the center, and now we've got our ground cover. Our next step is to let this dry, but instead of just letting this dry and going off and doing something else, I'm gonna take that opportunity to now work on the other two pieces. So we're gonna start with the well, and then as soon as we're done with the well, then we're going to move over to the tent. So we're gonna be making tents. We're gonna be using cardboard to do the base structure, and then we're gonna be doing some other things to dress it up and get uh, that cool canvas look. Even though we only need one tent, I am gonna make a couple because they're really easy to do, and it'll be nice to have a couple of this style of tent. It's always a good idea if you can spare the time, if you're making some small scatter terrain like this to make just a couple instead of just sticking to one. So let's dive into it. The next move is going to be to take these little mini wood sticks. I just picked them up at Walmart and we're gonna use those to make the posts that are what are holding the tent up. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with one on the front, one on the back, and then make one look like it is sticking out this way. We're gonna figure it out. So now that we have our tent posts on, we are ready to move to the canvas that's gonna be going over the tents. Normally I would like to do this with either toilet paper or paper towel, but I don't happen to have any without any print. The printed paper towels and toilet paper make really, really nice quilted something like if you're putting quilts on a bed, but they don't do good things like canvas because it's just that print ends up distracting the eye. So uh, what I did was I ripped up an old stained t-shirt. I'm gonna cut that up into bits and that is going to be the canvas that goes on top of these tents. So let's get to it. Moving on on this project, I'm not sure if this is gonna make for an entertaining and engaging video. I sure hope it does, but I'm not sure. But I really wanted to showcase my process in working on this project pertaining specifically to 
working inside time constraints. When you're trying to get a project done, like let's say you only have a certain amount of time on a weekend to get a project done, it's really important that you know how to work during drying times and that sort of thing. If I'm just crafting leisurely, I can just work on something, let it dry, work on something, let it dry, work on something, let it dry. When you're working under a time constraint, you just can't do that. So what I'm trying to do is optimize while the tents are drying, I'm gonna move on to the well. So that's what we're doing. So what I did was I made a small circular disc out of XPS insulation foam. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start marking up the sides to look like brick, as well as use my hot knife to kind of burrow a hole down in the top here. And then that's gonna be where we're starting with this project. So let's get to it. So trying to get this piece to fit on here is a lot of trial and error. I just have to sit with it and be patient enough until I get it to all line up and fit correctly. But as of right now, it looks like I finally got it. I don't think that there's any particular trick or tip that I can give other than you just sit and play with it and you cut the pieces and you see if it fits and if it doesn't fit, you mess with it a little more until finally you have the piece fit up and ready to go. Now. What I need to do before I do anything else is get this upper piece carved up so that it looks like there is shingles uh, on it. And again, I'm not going to do traditional shingles. I'm going to do my plank roofing just so that it matches a lot of my other buildings and it's just honestly easier. So as we typically do, our next step is our Black Magic Craft base coat. And I say our Black Magic Craft base coat, which is just nonsense. It is Jeremy from Black Magic Craft's recipe, but it is a mix of 50% matte Mod Podge and 50% acrylic black paint. And what this does is it strengthens your foam, first of all, and second of all, it acts as your undercoat. So you've already got the piece black ready for paint in the next step. It goes on every piece of terrain that I make, and this little well is no exception. The paint scheme is not gonna be anything fancy. It's just going to be a gray on the stone with a khaki color as my dry brush. And then we're gonna do a watered down honey brown gray dry brush on the top and then maybe depending, I'll see what it looks like, but I might then do a khaki dry brush over the top of that as well. That's next.
The final step for paint is gonna be taking a black and painting out the inside of the well. Way we don't have to worry about trying to do any kind of like stone effects or anything inside. You can just paint it black and then that looks like the shadow. It's just easier to do it this way uh, when this way looks just as good. And so just two globs of hot glue later and our piece is finished. So crafting is always an organic process and it's one thing where you think you're finished and you should be done and then you look at the piece and you decide that it's not. So I started to look at this and where I was really pleased with it for about half a second, then I realized there was just some things that were missing about it that I think really are going to make it a lot nicer. Number one, I think I need to add some like cross bracing in here with a rope on it that goes down into the well. It could be that the handle broke off after you know it being moldy and rotted, uh, and then I'm gonna take some string and wrap it around it uh, to be rope that's going down into the well. And then the second thing is, I think that the roof is a little barren, so I'm gonna take, and just like we did on the stone last week for the Agatha's Lair build, I'm gonna put some moss on top here. Uh, and I think once I do that, then the piece is gonna be finished and it's gonna look great. So to do the rope, I'm gonna take a little bit of Eileen's tacky glue and I'm gonna kind of put it on my fingers and then I'm gonna twist it down the string. What this does is it soaks the glue into the string itself. Um, you kind of wanna squeeze out all of the excess and it just sticks perfectly and will dry absolutely rock hard. I'll just slowly wrap this over and then that will be what goes into the well. Drop a little bit of super glue, and then use the tweezers to grab the piece. And dunk each end into the super glue. Lastly, we're gonna mix up a little bit of flock paste, and we're gonna do our moss on top of the little well. We're gonna let this dry and we're gonna see what it looks like when it's done. So while our well and our tents are drying, we're gonna go ahead and switch gears back to our main ruined watchtower piece. And what we have to do now is get it all Mod Podged with Black Magic Craft base coat and then get this thing painted up and ready to move on with it. So right now that's the plan, let's go. All right, so now we're on to doing our dirt, which we're gonna be doing in our typical three tones of brown. When we get done with that, we're gonna be doing our typical grays on our stones here, and then painting up the wood. Let's get this thing painted up. So the next step is getting all of the flocks that I need onto this piece. This time I'm gonna be doing three different types of flocks slash ground coverings. The first one that I'm gonna be doing is my typical mix, a blended turf and some other, you know, clump foliage into a paste and then smear that all over in patches to get kind of patchy, thick, unkempt grass. The next one that I'm gonna be doing is an olivey green fine turf, which I'm gonna put all over the rocks and in cracks and places to create a mossy-like effect. The final one that I'm gonna be doing is more of a ground cover, but I'm gonna be taking a dark brown flock, specifically a dark brown fine turf, and mixing it with backyard dirt that I've sifted down, and then I'm gonna be mixing that up into a paste and putting it around to create like a rubble effect or piles of dirt, and then that's gonna go in places like the planter, as well as in between all of the floorboards. I'll be using that so that it makes everything feel a little bit more natural, and there's not such harsh edges in between, like the planks to stone and all that sort of thing.
Now that our flock is all dried up, we are ready for the final touches on our ruined watchtower here. All that's left is to pull out our World War Scenic grass tufts and get this thing decorated up and looking great. Now that we got the tufts on our main piece, it is now time to just finish up our tents. And this kind of brings me to a point that I think is really good for me to make. And it's something that I always forgot or shied away from when I was a new crafter. And that is don't be afraid to pivot when you're building something because you end up accidentally doing something that's cooler than what you intended. So I'm gonna use these tents as an example. The tent that the necromancer is supposed to be in, according to the book, is super colorful, and that's one of the identifying features of it. Well, I'm just gonna be honest. What I ended up getting out of this like old dirty t-shirt look is way cooler than anything that I could paint. The white styrofoam underneath makes it look like there's nothing under the canvas here and the cardboard actually looks like wooden supports. And to me, that's so much cooler than what I was intending. So I'm gonna leave it. So I ended up with something cooler than I intended and I get to save myself a little bit of work with it. So that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell to know when our videos go live every week. Leave me a like down below if you like this particular video. That goes a long way. In the comments section, I'd like to hear from everybody. Is this a piece that you would build a set for? Me as a DM, I just like having these kinds of sets. Is me crafting this crazy? Is this something that I wouldn't need to do? So I'd love to hear your opinions. Let me know. But that's all I have for this week. Until next week, I'll be seeing you.